Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. In today's video, we're looking at this funny looking thing, which is a Relish Trinity. Now, let me tell you the story about this, first of all, and how I came by it, and then we'll talk about the guitar. Uh, about three weeks ago, I had a message from Reverb. I'm sure loads of people got the message as well, saying that these guitars had been discounted down to, I think, about 350 quid. First of all, these guitars started off at I think about 1500 pounds then they came down to about a thousand then down to about six and now they're down to 350 so I thought you know what that's worth a punt so 350 I bought one the thing about this guitar and I wouldn't have bought it for any other reason but you can do this with it you take the pickups out now what Relish have done they've created this system where you can mount or they can mount pickups on this special back plate here and hot swap the pickups as you wish. Now, when this guitar first came out, it was, as I said, about 1500 pounds, but you've got a set, I think three sets of pickups. You've got a humbucker set, a single coil set, and a P90 set. Now they're just selling it with one set. But I think for 350 quid, with what it does, it's quite a useful guitar. <laughs> Now this guitar is made in Indonesia. Relish guitars are actually a Swiss company. And if you go and get one of their Swiss made guitars, it's gonna cost you about three and a half to 4,000 pounds. But as I said, you can pick these up at the moment for about 350 quid on reverb. So let's go through the good and the bad points about this. The build quality of this guitar is actually really, really good. The neck is finished absolutely perfectly. The intonation is flawless, sounds and plays absolutely perfectly. Now there are a few issues because the guitar is quite thin. It's, I would say, getting onto about three quarters of thickness of a telly or a strap. What happens is it neck dives a bit. So it's not the most balanced of guitars. And especially when you start taking out the, the pickups, it's even worse. Not that you'd ever obviously play it like that, but it is incredibly light. And even with the pickups in, I would say this guitar weighs about seven pounds. So let's have a listen to some of the tones we can get out of it. Let's switch to the neck position first. It's got a sort of in-between Les Paul and a Strat sort of sound about it. The scale length is more like a Strat, but obviously it's got humbuckers, more like a Les Paul. So you're gonna get more of those sort of brighter tones from the scale length, but the fatness of the humbuckers. Let's try the middle position.
another bridge. It's definitely not as dark sounding as say like a Les Paul. It definitely has its own thing, which I think for the money, especially 350 quid, I think that's a good thing. Try the neck. For me, I really like the neck position. I think it's got lots of clarity and it's sort of in between a humbucker and a single core and you get loads of sort of definition from the notes. And now the mid. So the pickups that come with it sound great, but you've got lots of choice. If you go to Cream Tea pickups, you can buy some of their pickups and they'll fit straight into this guitar without any extra wiring. So you can have that option if you choose to do so. Now, as well as the weight issue, which is quite a minimal thing, one thing that really bugs me about this, because this is a modern sort of sounding and looking guitar, the problem is the headstock. Now, if you look at the headstock, and when you buy, when you go and buy a Gibson guitar, you sort of expect this because that's the tradition, that's the way it was done. Now, because this has been designed from scratch, the way that the tuning pegs are, if you look at the angle from the nut, up to the G and the D string, it's completely wrong. Go and have a look at something like a PRS guitar or a Heritage guitar where they've actually sorted out this issue. I personally feel that a guitar, and if you go and have a look at their Swiss made guitars, the expensive guitars, it's exactly the same. But I think a guitar like this, because it's been designed from scratch, that issue could have been sorted. <laughs> So there you go. Now at 350 quid, I think this is an absolute bargain. They are available. Uh, there are some left on Reverb. I think the guitar store that I got this from was Sound Effects up in uh, up the north of England somewhere. But I'm guessing if you're in a in another country, I'm guessing you can still order one and get it shipped over. For 350 quid, it's an absolute bargain. I'd love to try some of the more expensive models to see what I think of that and to see if the whole sort of balance issue is more sorted out and to see if they've actually sorted out this brake angle on the headstock. But the technology is fantastic and I wonder if in the future companies like Fender or Gibson might actually incorporate some of this technology into their guitars. Anyway, I really hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul and I'll see you next time. Cheers.